Good morning, Portland. Scattered showers once again and temperatures on the cool side. Mid 40s out the door and only mid 50s this afternoon. Watch out for a hail shower as well. A safe rest village for the homeless set to open as soon as next month in Multnomah Village could be the first of six in Portland. President Biden is expected to discuss infrastructure when he visits Portland, Oregon later today. The White House says Biden will talk about his efforts to, quote, continue bringing down costs for American families. Good morning, everybody. It's 5.50. I got breakfast sandwiches, hot coffee, got some decaf. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I've been in this shelter from the beginning when it first opened. I'm 60 years old. I'm the oldest one in here. <laughs> This shelter actually is, you don't understand, this shelter is a royal palace for me. Even though we are sleeping in a mat, I call this a twin bed. Not, not a mat, but a twin bed. Okay, let's go. This is our everyday routine, every day. This is what we do. By six o'clock, I have to be out of here because my schedule is at seven o'clock. Let's go. I have to hurry up and go to work. Let's go be. In Pearl District, there's a lot of empty apartments. It's just too expensive for other people to afford it. I work for Rite Aid and I'm a floor supervisor. That is a regular nine to five job. I don't look like I'm homeless, but I am. our outside guests at 6.30. And so I get their meal ready first. My name is April O'Connor and I'm a breakfast chef at Blanche House. Oops. <laughs> it's like I'm a witch with my very own square cauldron. And I like to be able to say that I feed hundreds of hungry people every day. We'll serve about, I wanna say over a thousand meals a day. Me personally, you know, I'm, I've been through homelessness before. This is what the volunteers will scoop from when they're on the line dishing up for service. They're all set up over there, okay. hopefully. Five minutes. It seems like there's a huge crisis at the moment. The need of a lot of people right now. Get two minutes. Apple, oatmeal, and donuts. Coffee with cream and sugar in it. Good morning. Here we are. I think it's an increasing problem that people don't know what to do about. People don't know what to help. People don't understand the complexity of the roots of the problems. More and more people are slipping through the cracks. So that's what we're here for. We're in Portland, we're on 102nd and Woodstock. We call it the gravel pit. Different areas have different names, but this is the pit. You know, this, this ain't nice. Nobody wants to live like this. My name's Kimmy Murray and um, I'm 53 years old and I'm homeless. I'm vision impaired and disabled. Me and my husband alone have put in hours to get help from different agencies, churches, you name it. We're doing the footwork. We have an income, but you see where we are. 
if I'm not 55, not pregnant, don't have a kid under 18, or a major drug addict in treatment or going through mental health, I can't get no help. My family can't get no help. Really, we just get up and the wife and I pray in the morning and uh, just kind of get a fire going to warm up because it's usually pretty chilly out in the morning. This tent was given to us by a friend because um, somebody ransacked our other one. And then we get it, my husband got it set up and then it started flooding. So a friend of ours um, gave us a case of really huge diapers and we have them down on the floor soaking up the water. As you see, no matter what, we're sticking together, so. Yeah, it's, it gets hard. The city looks at the homeless problem as a nuisance, as an inconvenience, you know, because the Rose City, you know, roses die too. When I lost my home, my rose wilted. It hasn't died yet because I'm not giving up. There's something out there for me, for my family. I don't know if, if the city told them to move or or what, but they're, they're definitely not here, so we're cleaning up the mess. They make the neighbors happy, too. We need a shovel guy. We pick up about 6,000 pounds a day, between five and 6,000 pounds every day. Quarter million pounds of garbage in the last three months. I'm going down the road. I'll pull up right there. We'll take that stuff right there. We'll load up right down there. It's tough these days. We got a lot of homelessness, and I don't see it going away anytime soon. We clean an area. And two weeks later, I'll be cleaning this same area. So um, it's it's an ongoing problem. Um, it, I don't know what the answer is, but um, we're just trying to help them out. Uh, rock in the middle. Over the rock, through the woods. You know, we got to become some kind of housing for them. Okay, yeah, let's put all the tools in there and let's rock and roll. So she can right. go straight, and I'll back out that truck, and we go to the dump. One, two, three, go. <laughs> I don't know all the answers, but we got a lot of work to do. Want to get your shoes on? Brush your hair. Brush my hair. Oh, you want me to brush your hair now? Okay. Are you good at sharing? Do you know how to spell your name? Her name's Skylar. She's five. Whenever I'm having a bad day, she come around and like, Mom, I love you, you're my best friend. Like, it just makes me so much better about my day. I'm Tiana, I'm 26 years old, and this is the tiny house that moves. And then this is my bed where I sleep, and there's where we drive and everything. The kitchen, you know, it's not the biggest, but then I got bunk beds over here. This is where Scholar's bed is and it's where we keep our laundry usually. <laughs> the first day I got it, the oven door kind of fell off. So we haven't been able to bake anything. We have a microwave and a stove, but it's not like, like I'd love to bake a tater tot casserole or a pizza or something. We were in a neighborhood where the neighbors didn't really like us because you know, sometimes they get kind of mad about people in their RVs and stuff. And I told them the first night we pulled up there, they came out, I said, I'm pregnant, I'm working, I'm clean. You know, I just want a nice, quiet place to sleep. Please, I won't cause you problems if you don't cause me problems. But eventually, I mean, we got our windows shot out. We had neighbors come out, like a gang of them against us. And we're like telling us, you know, we'll pay you to leave. I'm like, okay, fine, we're going. Like, I didn't even want the money. I didn't even get the money. I just left like out of their way, okay? It's impossible to find anywhere to stay without one neighbor getting mad at you. We're getting on the freeway. Woo. Sometimes it would be nice to have like a more permanent home for water and power and all that. 
It's a little rough sometimes, yeah. We used to live in an apartment, but she calls it a co-